Hello guys, Gorm the Ghost here. Thank you for joining me on another video today. Today we are doing something a little different. As you saw from the intro, we are not working on Kingdoms of Colovia in this video. We are going to be doing my very first plot review. And today, as you can see from the top of my screen, we are going to be reviewing Las Ruas. I hope I said that right. I just always call him Drust. We're reviewing his plot, and the warp is actually listed up at the top as well. Um, just type in warp and vast Drust, and it'll bring you to where I am. Not the same exact spot, but to this plot. But it will bring you to like the center of town or something like that. But we are actually going to start in a farmhouse. So, starting off here. We are inside the farmhouse, and to get started, let's just get a port out. And then I'll put it in F1 mode, so then you don't see my arms or anything while moving around. And it's a pretty detailed kitchen that I started off in. And what's really cool about the server is that they have these, um, player head, so you can see that's a basket, and if I were to go in and I would type in uh, the player head database, I think that's what it is, no, that's in there. Um, the database, I think it's TBD search, and if I do basket, it's in comfort. So, Anyways, I'll get the commands and put it in the chat. But anyways, there are these cool player heads that you can look for and add in as more decorations than just what the mob has, the mod has in the game. Such as this cool basket here, which does look like the wicker basket that we use in Conquest E4. So we're starting off in this small farmhouse in a kitchen and it's also double used as a bedroom. And going up the stairs is a little, looks like a game room for kids and a kid's room. And a laundry space for the, um, for the house as well. So, this is a very big plot. As you can see, just flying around, I didn't even cover an eighth of it, really. It's so it's probably going to take a few episodes to go through, but it's really fun looking at a few of the details. I have gone through a little bit, I'm not looking at everything in detail, but just like getting bearings around and stuff on this spot. And let me tell you, it looks amazing. And if you were to come on this server, you could take a look at it too. And not only is Drust, but there's so many other talented builders on here that really, really know how to use the blocks given to them into different ways to come out with making different looking things, even in ways that I have never even thought of, so I'm constantly getting great ideas and hopefully this serves as great inspiration for your build. So what I'm doing is I wrote down a few notes here um, for myself. So then, um, I have some talking points when talking with Gus about this service, and I know, and I can remember exactly what we talked about. So this plot itself, I'm just going to fly up a little bit, and, like, I'm on a, um, render distance 8. It might be a little laggy, I'm not sure. I might have to turn down the uh, render distance even more, but... This plot is huge, and the best part of it is this castle up here. I will not be able to get to the castle in this episode. It's probably going to be broken up in three different episodes, just so then the time it takes to walk through a whole bunch of everything is just going to be taking a long time, but I am more than happy to do this for the rest. Um, 
but I'm on a run to this estate, and this plot has taken him a year and a half to build. So a year and a half to put down all of this block hand by hand, and for it to come out as a masterpiece as it is. And that's what I love about Minecraft. It's like a painting. Like you can put down so many different things that are intended for like different things and come out with something totally awesome and amazing. And I know I sound very silly saying all this, but just the inspiration, just looking from here and ideas that I can get from Drush and other builders is great. So we're out here by the chicken coop and once again utilizing those uh, player heads of uh, the little models for chickens here that they can use because they do not have um, mods for animals or for NPCs which I had before in my past videos um, because they were on single player world but to not have the server lag out there isn't any NPC mods or anything like that so in place of that there are these player heads that they can put down that act as basically NPCs too and there are um, armor stands that you can also put down too and turn them into NPCs and it's a pretty cool concept and ideas. So now it looks like we're coming across a small garden with many different things and there's some carrots to beans and yeah just the different layers that they use too like um yeah that's great looking and using different plants as leaves besides the little leaf blocks it themselves adds on so much more detail in pushing it to the trees that you don't that you don't really see in regular Minecraft which is just really block trees but here on Darwin they strive to have um as organic looking build and nature as possible. So what do we have here? We have looks like a charcoal burner? Yeah, that's what I think it is. Um did say there were charcoal burners on this spot and they'd be farther away from the town only because you wouldn't want to be burning down the city or anything like that. And I actually didn't even know about charcoal burners until Kingdom Comes Over, and so it's pretty funny. So I like seeing this in the um, in the plot, being able to see that small detail bring this world to life even more. So let us continue on right down in the road. I don't know if I'm going to go in every building. I'm going to try. I might not give feedback on everything, but um, we're just going to at least take a look at as much as we can. So what I've been trying to do ever since coming on this server, and even a little bit beforehand, is trying not to build in the Minecraft general way of building in with straight lines and like square buildings. Um, as you can see here we have a, um, it looks like maybe an aviary? It might be, because there's a beehive right there. Um, trying to use diagonal builds to make it more different, bring um, different um, looking buildings in here. Um, because if, it, if everything goes on the grid pattern as Minecraft is intended to be built as, I think it's very boring and you're really looking at the same thing over and over again and this just shows that you can still build buildings but with uh, diagonally and I've been trying to work on that myself as well. So let's see what's in here. Yeah, it's some um, walk on into a kitchen. And going up the ladder we have a small bedroom. Yeah, just up in the attic. And he even put in the support for the uh, roofing and everything, which is great. So yeah, this is a great looking building. Looks like a very poor like house too. Like I don't think they'd be making a lot of money uh, making honey, but they could because I'm not 
100% sure because honey was used for a lot of things like wax, was, like beeswax and stuff was used for like honey, for like candles and different things. So who knows? It could be either rich if he had like, a big idea, but this doesn't look like it was a, it is a big farm too. So maybe they're just starting off and where that they've hit hard times, but the detail in here looks great. And it looks like, oh, I may even be wrong. Um, it looks like that there's a um, craftsmith of some sort, like a uh, carpenter. Or at least maybe they're fixing up the place a little bit. Oh, just think it. When building up plots, you have every little bit of space to work on before you come out of your boundaries. And a lot of builders do try to build on and like use every available space as possible. Um, yeah, so yes, this is the basement, obviously. And down in here. Yep, they even have the small rat, which is one of the blocks in Complex B4. The basement looks great, like, just a storage area, just a clutter of everything. I myself am not really a cluttered type of builder, because I just, it's just not my style, but this, those who can do it right, make it look great, because if I do clutter, it just makes it look like I'm just throwing random things down, which is probably something I need to work on, like learning where goes what, like what item goes here, what item should go there, but um, I guess with the more facts you have, the better you get it, but this um, basement looks great, it looks very well used and stored and lived in, then we'll go back on up to the surface. Come on out, and there's also an outhouse too, as well. We won't spend much time in there. Um, hang on just one second, I will just turn down the render distance a little bit. Okay, I turned it down just a little bit so then it doesn't seem as laggy. Uh, hopefully it doesn't. Um, so we come across this small caravan, a little cart, it looks like a little trader's cart, which is really cool. Um, a long time ago before doing YouTube, I tried building one of these, but it didn't really come out that great, but this looks great. Taking, making big wheels, like, there is a wheel block that we have in the, in Conquest Street Forge mod. And if you put them all side by side, you get like a gigantic wheel that you see here, like the connection textures and stuff. Um, thanks to Monsterfish, the creator of Conquest, and all the cool work on the mod and everything. So yeah, this is like a small like camp for like a trading person who travels around and their wares. I pretty much picture a Khajiit sitting out here saying, buy my stuff for you. Let me show you what I have. So, coming up to the next building, it looks like this is a blacksmith. Um, right now, if you were to come on the server, um, the custom painting plugin is not working. I did ask to have to got these paintings and any of these signs. You'll see a couple signs in the um, in the plot, and they're very awesome making. But right now the plugin is broken, so unfortunately we can't submit new paintings. But to do that, apparently, you can submit them; they just get approved and stuff. And I'm actually thinking of maybe doing some medieval type of painting, like looking at some and like creating my own to be able to submit when the plugin does come back on and when Drush did say that it will come on uh, in a while. But this looks great. I mean, it really brings out like the um, purpose of this building here. Like, 
if I would have just walked up into it, yeah, I probably would have figured out eventually that it was a blacksmith thing with forge, but first walking up, I don't know if I'd see that, but these paintings make it look more realistic, because walking around in a medieval town, you see, like, um, a lot of signs from a blacksmith sign to coopers to fletchers to any of the trades, they'd be signs and uh, guild marks and stuff like that. So, as I was saying earlier, like, just using different blocks to be able to come up with, um, different things. Like, we have this wheelbarrow here, which looks really good using a directional, um, cap. What's this called? Uh, let's see. Capital, yeah. Um, block. And it does come, basically, every variant of block has them. And then we see some more of the player heads as acting as ores and stuff like that and charcoal. So yeah, this definitely this building definitely does have the feel of a uh, blacksmith in here with the open forge. Is it, is this part of the building would be open because it'd be like so hot in there, like it'd be roasting, like working in a kitchen on a very hot day, probably in like Louisiana where. It's just all muggy and hot, but so that's why you'd have like an open uh, side so then cooler like air can come in for ventilation. And I mean, let's go right on in. Uh, I thought it might be a shop, but it looks like the blacksmith kitchen and living quarters in here. And this is actually a chocolate box, which makes it look like a backpack, which is pretty cool. Like a, traveling staff that you pack up all your things when heading to market. Like you'd bring like the essentials in there like coins and maybe some tools to fix some things for people walking by and saying, Hey I need a quick fix of this and you just put a rivet on here or something real quickly. I'm not really sure how you put a rivet on without being able to forge, but we'll just go with that. And coming up here, we have a small bedroom. Um, one thing in medieval times is um, a lot of times now in houses, you see like a lot of things in there, like a lot of furniture. But back in medieval times, it was more simple, like building here, more simple. Um, and as you can even see here, like there's supposed to be straw on the floor. Like they change that out every little while um, because the straw would be basically acting as a rug and basically catch like um, dirt and grease and grime that falls on the floor and they change it out and so Drush did a really great job at adding in this small detail which I've only recently found out while watching documentaries on like, medieval life on my child and stuff as I'm doing medieval build myself and Finding out that they regularly change the straw on the floor and the houses um, for more cushion, it would keep insulation. And as I said, it would also be almost like a carpet soaking up like fruits and other stuff. Like they'd go out and catch their own food, like a rabbit or something, and have to um, skin it or whatever. And the cart and the straw would basically like catch all like the gross stuff from having to do that and as I said it would also be like an insulation thing too and if they had guests come over what they'd do is just gather up all the straw and get rid of it and basically put down a new layer of straw on the floor because it'd really just be a dirt floor or a stone floor like this is most, in most um, medieval houses that are lower class like, it would just be a dirt floor so Instead of just walking around in dirt all day, you'd be walking around in the straw, which would make it a little more comfortable than standing in on the dirt. Or like hard rock or anything like that. So it's like their version of the carpet, which I think just did a great job at the fixing here. So, we're gonna come back out. And 
back over here, I didn't look over this way, but we have the bridge which you saw at the intro. We're going to go over that a little later, but we're going to come down to this other side over here. So the name of this blacksmith was Lizamezba blacksmith, and I know I just butchered that, and I do apologize if I do butcher anything. Um, yeah. So here it looks like we have a small ruin, like a, um, it's basically foundation of an old house or something that we see. And nature has really reclaimed it. And it. Yeah, definitely. This was a house and it could have burned down or something. Um, so yeah, nature reclaimed it. So good job to us on making it look like that. And it's in, yeah, you can definitely see that. We definitely have the feeling of actually walking through here and seeing how life comes back and especially nature in an area that's no longer used. Alright, so... Looks like we have some... high tier drying out for leather and stuff like that. For leather making. And in the back over here, looks like we have some sort of water wheel here. But what it's powering, I'm not 100% sure. This looks nice. It's All right, let's on, head on into the next building and see what's in here. Yeah, definitely the leather smith, but the hides are just drying out over there, and they're working on something over here. Like, they're working on, like, kelp or something, like maybe they're making cloaks or rugs or something. Someone needs a rug to be made. And we'll come on in and see what the interior of their house looks like. Nice and cozy. This kitchen. And storage area up here in this small loft that has food. A nice big fireplace which they'd thing to meet up in there and have it cooked. And then going up into let's check out the bedroom area. Yep, a very small bedroom. Not really detailed, which is fine. As I said, there isn't a... Back then, there wasn't really, like... Like, except if you were really rich, there wasn't really, like, a need to show off money because they didn't have it. They just had simplified homes, simple, simplified lives. So, yeah, this looks great. Let's just take a peek on out there. Yeah, this must be where they, after skinning the animals, they put the bones in here and probably throw it in the river and we'll be done with it. We'll move around this way into the actual workshop. And what's pretty cool about this is, um, if you've watched some of my videos, I've been trying to do layers too, but Mine are more like gradual going up, not like the steep inclines, which I do need to work on steep inclines and making it more believable and stuff. But, um, there are awesome paint brushes you can use to basically put a layer down and then paint it to whatever blocks you want it to be that are layered, of course, like uh, grass or gravel or anything like that, dirt. So we'll see what's across the street. It looks like a small peasant house. It's a very simplified house with a little kitchen for ventilation because there'd need to be vents for the smoke to go out. Good. Yeah, this person's a very poor worker. It probably works for the, uh, probably the, uh, apprentice or someone's house who Someone who like works for the leather smith over here. 
Oh, it looks like this is the power pole burn. I thought it was back there. That must have been like a camp area. So, sorry, Drus. I did not see the, uh, the first walking through. I did not notice this big, um, oven, which they turned the wood in here, throw it in there, and turn it into charcoal. How it, exactly they do it, I'm not sure. But, that's at least what I know what it is. It takes basically like wood and then it turn it into charcoal, which you see right here. This is the after product of it. And what is this? Uh, sandy chestnut stable. Alright. So this is. Oh, it's probably down there. I'm just walking into a small house right here. Storage area, yeah. So Handy Chestnut Stables is the stables of this. But obviously they have a lot more money if they can afford their own banner and stuff um for here. I do like this frame, what is this? Um, I'll have to ask Gus how we got this frame here. I'm not even 100% certain. Like these are paintings from using, um, oh, it's not even one of the, um, these are custom paintings that are made from people taking pots and basically they fly up above and basically do pixel art and turn it into painting. And, um, I thought it was one of the uh, paintings that come with the Artacraft overlay or the um, Darwin overlay paintings. Um, but yeah, so I was just more curious about the frame, how we did that. That was great. I'll find out, and I may utilize something like that for a banner. Um, once the, uh, as I said, the um, plugging comes in, I'd like to make my own custom um, paintings, but I have made some custom banners, as you saw in the videos, like the last one in Kingdoms of Colovia, there was a banner there, and that was actually Old Fort's banner, the uh, Empire Trading Company's banner. So I do work on them, but it just takes a while since I, it takes me a little bit to come up with ideas. So this is the Handy Chestnut Stable, so this is where they store all the hay. Yep. I guess the ones that are going to go directly to the horses are down there, and the overstock is up there. And the horses have a very fancy stable right here. And I do like the use of the um, levers as they're holding up the windows. That, that looks good. On in here, we have where the horses stay in here. One, two, three, four, five. So there's one for six stables. I'm guessing you can come in here and stable your horse for a, probably a pretty good sized fee. And then be able to just walk on into town over the bridge that we passed back there and then come back and when you're all done and pick up your horse. And the stairway. And this might be the stable master's living quarters. Uh, and I say stable master because this is the guy who's probably running the stables down there, not the stable not the guy who's making the big money of the Stable. This guy's probably just the guy in charge of looking after the horses. Yeah, so this is a nice house to put the quarters in. A lot of times they utilize areas like that. So then they'd be right on site if the horses ever needed anything. And here there's a little workshop. Wow, this is Awesome. I never thought of making a doghouse like this. Oh, 
and a small garden in the back. I'm trying not to fall off the edge of the plot. Alright, let's go on in and take a look around. The entryway, I guess, where guests can come in and sign in and basically keep track of whose horses are in there and who's coming and going. And a nice small living, waiting area, I'm guessing. Living room. So the term living room really only came up after the uh, Victorian times, that when they were called parlors, but that's a whole different reason. Um, parlors were used for back before funeral homes. They were used for basically as a funeral room. And parlor. So, once funeral homes came about, the parlor changed its name into living room. So, nowadays we call it this, this area as a living room, but yes. A small kitchen in here, and it's obviously they have some workers here who will feed them. They have a nice fancy oven to bake and cook. They probably have a a cooker tube in here for the pantry down here as well. You can definitely tell if they have money here. I'm putting on upstairs. The storage making use of everywhere that we have in buildings. And interesting, they have their own dedicated room for the bathroom, um, with obviously a chamber pot. This would have to be roughly a feet out by hand. Not a job I'd like, but it was a job. You could probably find out more by searching uh, worst jobs in medieval times, and that, and the dung collector would probably come up. But that was, more, I believe, more for Catholic, and even in cases like this, probably. And here we have one of the bedrooms. I'm guessing it's the master bedroom. And it has a single bed. I know this is running over so I don't mind my uh, moving around a lot. I'm going to try and slow down my movement, so then it's not as dizzying when watching it. So I apologize if that's not for you guys. But um yeah, I'm guessing this is the master bedroom. Right here. Yeah, definitely um areas to sit while going to change. And in this one would be the kids room. The kid room. They probably only have one child. With a small closet to hold their clothing. And I'm guessing up in the attic is the servant's quarters. Alright, we have storage area. Now this might be the master's room. Might be. Yeah, most likely that this is the master's room as they can look out over the um, table seeing what's going on set up here, seeing anyone coming in, and then probably saying, we have a new arriver, and then whoever is working down below will check them in and whatever. So I'm going to exit this once I find my way out, and I will meet you guys back at the bridge and we will continue right on in the town. Alright guys, and we are back. As you can see, we are just walking into town, but we're going to probably have to end it as soon as we get into the square. Only because I've been looking down at the time, and I've been recording for 35 minutes, and this is already a very long episode. And I don't want it to be longer than it has to be, but as I said, this will be in multiple parts. This plot is so big, and there's so much to see. I just can't wait to show you more. And this will give me an opportunity to get more content out in between my buildings. So, in the next episode, we will continue down these streets here, in one direction, I don't know which yet. So, 
Thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this and if you'd like me to review your plot, let me know. If you're on the server, just approach me. You can always say, hey Scormster, can you please review my plot? And I'll be like, yes, I will be more than happy to. Or you can message me on here, on YouTube, and let me know. And I'll be more than happy to take a look at your plot and give you my thoughts. If I'm new to this, um, I'm probably not as exciting as other plot reviewers are, but we're looking at everything and we're going to see all the details, all the inspirations as you can see from right behind me, this awesome building. And so, until the next one, I'll see you later. Bye.